in the Scottish borders. Carterhor Forest was well known by all who lived there as a place of magic and sightings of the fairy folk. Tales of a fairy knight who put young girls under his spell had even reached the ears of the Earl of Dunbar, who decreed that girls should not go there alone. Janet was the Earl's daughter. She had grown into a fair maiden and her father also warned her to stay away from the forest. Despite this warning, Janet was strong-willed, intelligent and not the slightest bit disturbed by fairy stories. I will go where I please, she thought. No man has the right to say where I can or cannot go, not even my father. When all was quiet and the moon shone high against the stars, Janet left the castle for the forest to satisfy her curiosity. She pinned up her golden hair, tucked up her skirt, then started to run through the long grass, laughing at the freedom she found under the stars in the quiet of the night. Janet reached the forest and was surprised to find a riderless horse standing beside a well just next to the trees. The animal didn't seem to mind her. There was a rose bush by the well. Janet hadn't seen roses by moonlight before, but she knew there was something special about these ones as the flowers were open at night. The heady aroma and the rich darkness of the rose petals offered a beauty and a promise that called to her. Janet picked a rose and a voice behind her said, You have come to Carter Hall without asking my leave and you have plucked a red rose from my bonny tree. Have you no fear of me, Janet? Startled, Janet turned round to see the fairy knight. Why should I fear you? I have no need to ask permission to pick a rose. These lands and all on it are my own. My father is the Earl. Despite her bravery, Janet wondered if she'd done the right thing leaving the safety of the castle. How did the stranger know her name? My name is Tam Lane, said the knight. There was something familiar about him, an air of gentleness that made Janet feel she could trust him. Whether enchantment or love, Janet let Tam Lane take her by the hand and they enjoyed each other's company that night. As the sun began to rise, Janet knew she must hurry back to the castle before someone noticed she was gone. She ran home leaving her fairy lover behind. In the days that passed, all that Janet could think about was her fairy night. She had lost all interest in her life at the castle. When the moon was high in the night sky once again, she left her chamber and ran as fast as she could to Carter Hall. When she got to the forest, she plucked a rose from the tree once more, and there behind her appeared the fairy knight. He said, Why do you pluck another red rose from my bonny tree? Janet paid no attention to the question and asked Tamlane, Have you always been one of the fair folk? Tamlane smiled softly and said, It makes my heart sore that you ask my love, for now I can tell you the whole truth of my story. When I was a young boy, my uncle took me out riding to teach me how to hunt. I stopped for a rest near this fairy forest, but no sooner had I lain on the grass than the fairy queen came and carried me off to her kingdom and made me one of her own. I often come back to this spot to remember the place of my birth. Tamlane continued, Before I was carried off to fairyland, you and I used to play together in the castle grounds. An enchantment has kept me from saying who I was until you asked. Your question broke the spell as the price of the fairy gifts given to me as I must always tell the truth. The stolen memories flooded back to Janet and she remembered her time spent with Tam Lane. This made her love for him grow even stronger. Why did the fairy queen take you as a child? she asked. Every seven years on Halloween the fairies must pay rent to the netherworld by giving up a member of their court to the Dark One. They are a proud and ancient people and would rather hand over someone who is once human than one of their own. Even though the Queen has been kind to me, I fear I've been chosen as this year's payment. Janet gasped with dread. 
but tomorrow is Halloween. A look of sadness passed over Tamlin's face, and he nodded. It is, and I will gladly spend my last night with you. A look of resolve came over Janet's face, and she said, What can I do to save you? A smile crossed Tamlin's lips, and he said, At midnight, the fairy court will journey beyond the forest and pass by the well at the cross of Milestone. That will be the only chance for us to win my freedom. Three groups will pass, each one of different rank and nobility. The first will be the common fairy. You can ignore them as they pass. The second will be the fairy nobles. When they pass, show them respect, but say nothing and do nothing to attract their attention. The third will be the Queen's retinue. When they pass, I shall be there as one of the Queen's knights. How shall I know you among so many knights? asked Janet. The Queen of the Fairy will be at the head of the procession, and I'll be at her side. Ignore the rider on the black horse and the one on the brown horse. I'll be on the milk-white steed with a star above my visor. My right hand will be gloved, but my left hand will be bare. When you see me, you must pull me off the horse and hold me tight, no matter what shape I take. The fairy queen will not give me up so easily, and she will use her magic to transform me into many fearful things. No matter what happens, I will never harm you, Janet. You are my one true love. If I change into a red-hot iron, you must throw me into the cold, clear water of the well. This will make me a man again. Quickly throw your green cloak over me, as that will break the fairy spell. Janet and Tamlane spent a bittersweet night together, and as the light began to return, she hurried back to the castle. She avoided the company of others, as all she could think about was the trial ahead. Darkness arrived quickly, and it was soon Halloween night. Janet stole away from the castle once more with her heart full of worry and hope. She was determined to rescue Tamlane from his fate, but she knew it would not be an easy task. Janet hurried to the milestone cross and waited for the fairy procession to pass. Before long, she heard the most beautiful music and saw the lights and banners of the fairy court coming towards her. Janet stood patiently as the first company passed. As the next group of fairies came by, she bowed respectfully to them. Then came the third, the grandest of the procession, with the fairy queen at its head. A knight on a black steed passed by, then a knight on a brown one. Next was a knight on a milk-white steed. Janet knew immediately that this was Tam Lane, she could see the star above his visor, and his left hand was bare. Without hesitation, Janet grabbed the bridle of the milk-white steed and pulled the rider off the horse and into her arms. She held him tight as the fairy folk screeched with anger. The queen did her worst as Tamlane changed into an adder, a toad, an eel, a crow, a swan, a wolf, a bear, and then a lion. But Janet held him tight, though his form wriggled, struggled, flapped and snapped. The fairies cried, Change him into a red-hot iron. Let him burn her arms. Let's see how well she holds him then. The fairy queen quickly changed Tamlane into a blazing hot iron. This was the moment that Janet was waiting for, and she threw the hot iron into the cold waters of the well. To the dismay of the fairy court, Tamlane was instantly transformed into his mortal form. Janet threw her green cloak over him, and in that moment the fairy spell was broken, and the fairy queen no longer had any claim over her former knight. The fairies turned away and left Janet and Tamlane in peace. There are ancient laws that even the fair folk must abide, and Tamlane was no longer their own. Some say that the Fairy Queen had a saddened look as the procession disappeared into the night. The faint words of a song could be heard in the distance. She who borrowed young Tamlane has got a stately groom. 
She's taken away my bonniest knight, left nothing in his room. But had I known, Tamlane, Tamlane, a lady would borrow thee, I'd have taken out your two grey eyes, replaced with eyes of tree. Had I known, Tamlane, Tamlane, before we came from home, I'd have taken out your heart of flesh, replaced with heart of stone. Had I known yesterday, what I now know today, I'd have paid the fiend seven times his rent before seeing you run away.